discuss a very important topic today that is artificial sweeteners are they safe for consumption or not whenever a patient walks into the opd of a doctor especially a diabetologist he would generally come and ask you doctor i want to take artificial sweetener should i take is it safe and most of us doctors are not very knowledgeable would say okay fda has approved it's safe you take it some of us say no 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 take natural things don't take artificial sweeteners so now what is the real truth about it what are the various controversies and what is the consensus that i'm going to discuss with you now very briefly so artificial sweeteners you know give you sweet taste without much calories or very little calories five have been approved by fda out of which most popular which we know are aspartame and sucralose and stevia has come recently that's a plant product from south american shrub and it's used as a food item it's considered grass that is generally safe for consumption but not approved by fda as an artificial sweetener so if you go on the internet and google it lot of side effects of sweeteners are there including headaches loss of immunity cancers weight gain diabetes insomnia alzheimer's disease dementia now when i reviewed the literature most of these things have been cleared off cancer was one big needle of suspicion there because in 1970 saccharin was withdrawn from the market because it was thought to produce uh, bladder cancer in rats but then very subsequently lot of studies showed that it doesn't have any effect on the bladder and they found out that metabolism of saccharin in rats is different from that in humans so now fda has cleared saccharin from this uh, cancer business and now it is reintroduced in 2000 approved by fda so now what are the problems we have seen that people who are taking these artificial sweeteners are gaining weight now lot of studies in prestigious journals like new england journal of medicine have repeatedly shown even boys adolescent and adult humans who have been consuming these diet sodas and diet cokes in usa have shown to gradually put on weight now this was very surprising supposing you have you are eating a substance which doesn't give you calories then how are you increasing your appetite and how are you increasing your weight and then the scientists got to know about a very very unique mechanism what is happening like in normal people if you take a sweet substance like you take a gulab jamun what happens is that your tongue sends sensation directly to your brain and your brain gives you a reward signal so you feel happy but when this goes the brain knows that sweetness is associated with calories so when it goes inside then the stomach the pancreas the fat cells relieve lot of these neuropeptides which signal the hypothalamus to decrease your hunger sensation so when you eat a sweet after one or two sweets you get satiety and you don't eat more so this is called the negative feedback signal to your hypothalamus once you take an artificial sweetener it re- the brain center in reward reward center in the brain is activated but there are no calories followed so no negative feedback signal goes from the gi tract to the hypothalamus to stop the hunger sensation and what happens as a result is that you are not satiated and you keep on eating and eating and eating so in a way paradoxically artificial sweetener is increasing your appetite and in turn is increasing your weight and then researchers started finding out that this is giving rise to more diabetes they started seeing that people who are consuming artificial sweeteners are turning more diabetic and again this was a paradox so they found out that this is the mechanism they are thinking that they are taking taking low calories but in fact they are taking more calories because the hunger sensation increases then came a series of very interesting researches in 2014 published in prestigious journals like nature where these are from israeli workers suez and uh, is the graduate uh, student who did this research and he gave artificial sweeteners to mice and he found that these mice after 8 to 11 weeks developed glucose intolerance then what he did he took these he thought it would be a change in gut biome that is causing this problem so he took the gut bacteria of these mice who were diabetic and put it in normal mice in their intestine and he found that these normal mice became diabetic then what he thought was okay if this is happening because of changes in the gut biome let me give some antibiotics 
to destroy this gut biome and see if, the, if it recovers. Then he gave antibiotics to these rats who had become diabetic by taking artificial sweeteners. And what to his surprise he found that these diabetics became normal after giving these antibiotics. Then what he did was, he thought let me now try it in humans. So he gave these artificial sweeteners to 11 uh, subjects, human beings. And to his surprise he found that after few weeks, four uh, to seven subjects and four out of these seven subjects developed glucose intolerance. Means they became kind of diabetic. Three did not. So what he concluded was that artificial sweetener is and moreover from these four individuals who turned diabetic, he took out the gut biome and transferred it to normal mice again from human to mice and he found those mice became glucose intolerant. So they concluded that artificial sweeteners, although not getting metabolized in the body, are affecting the gut biome and a gut biome is now considered to be a very important organ of the body regulating your metabolism and the changes in the gut biome, they are showing that if you are taking artificial sweeteners, the bacteria which are seen, the bad bacteria get more and the good bacteria become less. So these new findings tell us that although the researchers and scientists and we doctors feel that how can artificial sweeteners uh, you know, harm us when it is not getting metabolized and absorbed in the body, it could be because they are increasing your hunger sensation and secondly, they are destroying the good bacteria from your gut biome and more researches are continuing, more are needed to get into the final results. But I just wanted to share with all the doctors that artificial sweeteners, they should be used if at all. Try to avoid them. If at all you have to use, use them in very low quantities. Never use them in a chronic manner. Use it occasionally for some, uh, to just satisfy your suit, uh, uh, sweet tooth. And in a chronic way, if you are using, it is going to cause a problem. Although, having said that, I want to say that FDA has approved and still it has approved about five artificial sweeteners. All of them are approved and they are told to be safe. But in view of these studies which have recently come up, I advise the physicians who are advising their diabetic patients or patients of obesity to take a step back, think again, go through this recent literature, how artificial sweeteners can affect your gut biome and metabolism, take a step back, think and then judicially use it. We may be using, when we are using artificial sweeteners, it may be that we are dealing with a wolf in a sheep's clothing. Thank you. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.